brought to you by Sunbeam, the best electric shavers made. Makers of the new Sunbeam Rollmaster electric shaver and the new Sunbeam Rollmaster convertible for use on auto, boat, and home voltages, both featuring exclusive 11 degrees scissor-like shaving action. Now, let's all play What's My Line? And now let's meet our award-winning panel of What's My Line? First, the popular columnist whose voice of Broadway appears in papers coast to coast, Miss Dorothy Kilgallen. When Orlene Francis does a play called Amphitryon 38 in the summer theaters this season, she will be very, very fortunate to have a brilliant director, her husband, Martin Gable. On my left, a woman I know very well who's just written a new book called That Certain Something, Arlene Francis. And now the publisher of the Random House American College Dictionary, that wonderful dictionary where John learns all those confusing words, Mr. Bennett Cerf. And now a man who's been at the summit all week, looks as though he'd been climbing all week too, <laughs> Mr. John Charles Daly. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to What's My Line. It's nice to have Mr. Gable back with us. Thank you. Hope we can continue the proud tradition of puzzling the panel completely for the rest of the evening. We will also have a famous mystery challenger before the panel a little bit later in the show, and we'll meet our first contestant after this word. And now let's meet our first contestant. Will you please enter and sign in? B.F.C. Mary Luxus. Is that right? <laughs> I have never quite known what protocol was it. Do I call you private or miss or missus? You may call me private. Private? <laughs> Would it be miss or missus in private life? Yes. Yeah. Miss. Yes, private of. miss. How about me? <laughs> no, can't do that. Where are you from? I'm from Lawrence, Massachusetts. Lawrence, Massachusetts. Well, it's nice to have you with us. May I present our panel, Private Luxus? Will you join me over here, please? You know how we keep score on What's My Line? Yes, I do. In that event, we'll let the audience in the theater and folks who are watching at home know exactly what your line is. Panel, we will tell you that Private Luxus is salaried and that she deals in a service. And we will begin with uh, Bennett Cerf. Private Luxus, I'm a little confused. Are we supposed to try to guess what Miss Luxus does in the armed forces? Yes. Uh, does your service involve touching the people that you do the service for? Yes. Uh, is the service performed for both men and women? No. One down and nine to go, Miss Kilgallen. Uh, Miss Luxus, would it be possible that a man could do what you do? Yes. Uh, do you, in fact, know that there are men in the armed forces doing what you do? Yes. Uh, do you do what you do to men? <laughs> <laughs> In the line of beauty, of course. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, and it's... It's necessary for you to touch them. Yes. Do you also speak to them? Yes. Uh, <coughs> do you touch them above the waist? Yes. <laughs> uh, do you... Do you, as a result of this, uh, touching, are they given something? Small conference. <laughs> you 
Sometimes. What? Sometimes, she said. Uh, is it ever possible that you would touch them below the waist? No. Two down and eight to go, Mr. Gable. I'm sure that if Miss Luxus touches them, the situation is well in hand. <laughs> oh, my. That's supposed to be Bennett's department, Martin. You know That's that. That's not a pun, John. <laughs> it's a comment. Uh, does, does your immediate superior in your branch of the service, uh, does he uh, require a college degree for what he does? No. Just a moment, please. Got to have a small count. Uh, I'm sorry, that would be yes. I can't hear you. That would be yes. I, we, we've considered this matter. We want to be very fair, Martin, so we'll change the answer to Is yes. there anything about your touching these men that uh, improves their health in any way? Yes, it would. Would it be in the uh, largest sense even considered medical, the service you perform? Yes. Uh, could you, in the loosest description of your duties, be called a nurse? <coughs> Well, with that qualification that you put down, I think we would agree that some might, under misapprehension, so consider. There are no Martin. loose nurses in the army. <laughs> if I were a single man, Miss Francis, I'd say you run your business and I run. <laughs> Could your service be called a therapy in any way? Well, if it improves the health. Of well, the... actually, that's what I was going to say, Martin, that the term is so generally understood and applied on occasion that we would have to again give you that in a general term it should be considered so by some, while technically it might not necessarily so be considered. Fine, John. Uh, it, it, it... Does the person on whom you perform the service usually have to take off some portion of their clothing in order to achieve your service? Don't Good be nervous. Every day. <laughs> we turn here upon the actual fact of need, and since the necessity is not there, you get a no. That's three down and seven to go, Miss Francis. John, I take that as a bias. <laughs> Probably takes off his hat. Uh, do you work at all in the area of the head? Yes, I do. Could your work in any way be considered dental? Yes, it is. Well, are you a dentist of some kind, like an assistant, like you might brush the teeth or... <laughs> Well, I think probably, we'll flip all the cards anyway, but I think we've got to agree. <laughs> the, the exact term, Miss Arling, is dental technician, but I think in, technician, when you said assistant that you hit it on the nose. Not only that, and I think this is readily understandable, but Private Luxus is queen of Armed Forces Week for the Army, which, as you know, this past week has been Armed Forces Week. Even more week. fun than being a dental <laughs> technician. Well, it? I'm thinking of having some... One, I'm thinking of going to West Point, which is where Private Luxus is uh, presently stationed. Two, I'm thinking of having some trouble with my teeth. <laughs> That's what I'm thinking of. You were wonderful. Thank, Thank you, you very much, and you're a credit to the fine service here. I wasn't watching, so I don't know whether Bennett saluted Private Luxus or not, but he's the only man in the armed forces, even on a reserve contingency, who should salute privates first class. When now let's see what like we can that, do with that. When they look like that, John, I'm always willing. <laughs> <laughs> always willing. Let's see what our next contestant do, will do. Will you enter and uh, sign in, please? John? John Torp? How do you do, sir? I had to ask you to come over this way because otherwise the camera's way out there and they wouldn't be able to get both of us and then I would be concerned that they'd get you and I wouldn't be in it, you see. Oh, right. <laughs> Where are you from, sir? Uh, Cliffside Park, formerly Denmark. 
Cliffside Park, formerly Denmark. Yes. It was. Huh? Mm -hmm. When did we take it over? <laughs> <laughs> well, how long have you been in Cliffside Park? Uh, about seven weeks. Seven weeks. Yeah. So you're newly come to us from Denmark. That's right. Ah, well, it's nice to have you on our okay. program. May I present our panel then, please, Mr. Tork? Will you join me over here? <coughs> you know, in the seven weeks you've been with us, you've had a lot to learn. Have you learned among other things how we keep score on what's my line? Yes, I'll learn that. All right, fine. Then we'll let the audience here and that audience at home know exactly what your line is. panel, Mr. Torp is self-employed and he deals in a service. And let's begin the general questioning with uh, Arlene Francis. Mr. Torp, are your services for both men and women? Yes. Do they come to you for your service? Yes. And are they better as a result of your service? Are they better off? In a way. Um, You're very kind. <laughs> uh, do you uh, talk to them rather than uh, do something for them? Do you talk to them rather than do something for them? Physically. Well, I would say here, let me have... I do something for them. Yeah, I would say, I mean, we would accept here All that, right. you know, some exchange of, mm -hmm. of uh, banalities might be in order, but that actually it's the doing something that's more important. That's one down and nine to go, Mr. Sir. Mr. Torp, would you say that you amused or entertained them in any way? Yes. Uh, would you, could you in any sense of the word be considered a part of the entertainment business? Yes. Is it uh, entertainment that you do yourself rather than managing or supervising? Uh, supervising. So that would give you a no. <laughs> Two dollars eight to go, Mr. Joe Gallen. Uh, is the amusement that you supervise Ever out of doors, Mr. Torp? No. That's uh, no, three down, seven to go, Mr. Gale. You understand, Dorothy, why I chuckled at that. John, I'd like to comment at this point that I'm a great admirer of the Danish people who were marvelous during the war <clears throat> on our side, and I always feel that. And it's a pleasure to meet Mr. Torp. Thank you. And now I don't know what I'm <laughs> going to ask him. <laughs> well, it's an indoor sport. Whatever. An indoor sport. <clears throat> uh, would you be considered a coach in any way, Mr. Torp? <laughs> Mm -hmm. Say no. Yeah, I think no. So. No. Actually, this is probably a matter of semantics, but I think we have to give you a no. That's right. four down and six to go, Miss Francis. Do you do any training of any kind, Mr. Torp? Yes. Uh, uh, do you train people rather than animals? Uh, animals. <laughs> <laughs> well, five five down, down, Mr. Five to go, Mr. Sir. <laughs> Mr. Torp, are the animals that you train uh, four-legged animals? No. That makes it six down and four to go, Miss Gilgallon. Not four-legged. They're not four-legged? Now, we've had a lot of trouble with John about simians. May I assume that they are not in the simian family? Yes. Well, have they fewer than four legs? No. <laughs> that makes it seven down and three to go, Mr. Gable. I have to have a recap here, John. Oh. They are not four-legged animals, but they do not have fewer than four legs, therefore they have more. That's right. Have they more? <laughs> <laughs> You're dead. Think of another question. There are, okay. They have more than four legs. More than four legs. Maybe <laughs> They're animals. No, they have more than four. He's offered a great deal of information, uh, Mr. Torr. Yes. yes. You better ask uh, him directly, however. I think it's only animal. fair if I interject something here so that you're not too far misled. Remember, the question establishing the character of uh, the trainees here was in the general sense of animal or human. And the answer was yes to animal. Wasn't That's it? right. What was the answer to two legs? No. More than four. I'll pass to my wife, whose experience of the animal world is <laughs> great. <laughs> Arlene? Well, uh, am I to assume that there are more than four because I was going to go for less than that? <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. You can assume there, there are more are. than four. That's true that there are more than four. Well, uh, 
on the one animal. Oh, of course. Uh huh. Is it anything in the um, in the insect or bug family? Yes. Would it be an animal that has many, many legs? Like no. a, a, a caterpillar or a centipede or a, or a tarantula or a spider or... Feel better now? Are those animals, John? Eight down. Well, what are they going to be? They're not, they're not human. I said, the that, I, I said initially that the question put first was on the very general category of animal or human. Now, we obviously oh. had to give you one or the other. Now we have refined non the whole... The non-human. Oh. The non-human, we've refined the non-human. Did you have a, a thought, Mr. Sir? I think uh, so, too. Are these, are these uh, insects or bugs, which we've established they are, alive when you were working with them? Yes. Uh, would they be at all in the flea family? Yes. Are you a flea trainer? That's right. <laughs> Actually, Mr. Torp runs a flea circus, and his mother, if I remember correctly, runs one of the other... Are there only four in the world? There's only four in the world, yes. Your mother runs one in, in Copenhagen. That's right. Do you say Copenhagen or Copenhagen? Copenhagen. Copenhagen. And Copenhagen is incorrect or just not liked? Well, it's... Uh uh, German should you pronounce it. Pronounce oh, I see. It. But the, the Danish pronunciation is Copenhagen. Mm -hmm. And uh, he is now at Palisades Park over here in New Jersey. Mr. Torp, did you bring any of your actors with you? Yes, I have them all here. You've got them all here? Yes. Got them on you? <laughs> <laughs> no, they're all under control there, Hannes. Now, if I was Bennett, I'd start frantically scratching <clears throat> myself. But I'm not Bennett, so there you are. We had a lot of fun, Mr. Torp. Thank you very much for being our guest, and I hope you have a long and enjoyable stay. We'll meet tonight's mystery guest in just a moment, but first, here is a word from our sponsor. And now we come to the special feature of our program, the appearance of our mystery celebrity, for which, as you all know, my friends on the panel blindfold themselves. Are the blindfolds in place, panel? Yes, yes. John. Good. Will you come in, mystery challenger, and sign in, please? As you know, panel, in the case of the Mystery Challenger, we go to a different form of questioning. You ask one question at a time in turn, moving clockwise. We'll begin with Dorothy Kilgallen. Uh, have you ever made a log playing record? Have you ever made a long playing record? Mm-hmm. <whistles> That's no. <laughs> Mr. Gable? Are you in the theatrical business? <whistles> yes. Have One whistle is yes, two whistles no. We'll do it this way for a while because, quite frankly, we think that the voice is readily recognizable. Miss Francis. Uh, have you been in the picture business? Yes, Mr. Sir. Are you a man? <laughs> That's two down and eight to go. Miss that, no, that was no. Mm -hmm. Oh, so it's a lady who... Are you best known for your work in movies that are not musical. Mr. Gable? Is that yes? I that was yes. One is Have yes, you a picture now playing or about to open on Broadway? <laughs> That's no. Three down and seven to go, Miss Francis. Do you usually play dramatic roles? <laughs> yes, Mr. Sir? Are you married to Dick Powell? <laughs> 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 How did you recognize a whistle? I knew she was in town. <laughs> I knew she was in town, too, but it didn't help. Oh, this is one thing. No, Miss June, bless her, she's just a Bennett and, and Dorothy and Arlene and Martin will know my voice right away. So we get this whole whistle business up, and it hasn't done a bit of good. <laughs> Not a bit. It hasn't done a bit of good. Yes, so Dorothy. I must tell you, Dick and I were in Morocco the other night, and I said, oh, isn't that a pretty dress? And then I said, isn't that a beautiful figure? And I looked and I said, it's a June Allison. <laughs> I wasn't paying any attention oh, to you. Oh, you were so sweet. You know, no, when you this pose, if you love a person, you know their whistle as well as their voice. I know. <laughs> <laughs> 
I saw a picture before I went to, to the summit in Paris of two remarkably handsome children. Did you bring them to New York with you? Only Pam. Um, Richard and I brought Pam for about four days, and uh, she flew home with <clears throat> Daddy. Oh, is ben, Pamela's gone back home, too? Oh, yes. Ricky didn't get to come? No. New York oh, isn't ready for him. Not quite ready for him yet? No. I'm disappointed, Miss. I thought we were going to tie them in knots. Are you shooting any of your television series here? No, no. I'm not. The June Allison show on uh, CBS. Yes. Yeah, better be. I'm in trouble. Two. Monday night. Yes. 10.30. Yes. Yes. And a good show it is, too. Thank you. It's a good show. Such a pretty girl. You know, every once in a while I get lyric about gals, and this is one of them. She's as pretty as a picture and as cute as a button and as nice as they ever made the fair sex. Oh, I'm getting misty. <laughs> ah! Thank you for coming to see us, Thank honey. I'm you, sorry darling. we didn't Very give them more trouble. Wonderful I to see you. And say hello to Dick Powell, too. And now we'll have another contestant after this word from our alternate sponsor. And now let's meet a final contestant. Will you enter and sign in, please? Sue Mandel. Is that right? Is it Miss or Mrs.? Miss, sir. It's Miss. Miss, sir? Miss, sir. Miss, sir. Where are you from? Union, New Jersey. Union, New Jersey. Yes, That's sir. right across the river. That's fine. Right. Well, right across the stage is our panel. May I present our panel? How do you do? Will you join me over here, please? You know how we keep score? I certainly do. All right. We'll tell the folks in the audience here and those at home what your line is. Panel, needless to say, I think it's only fair to tell you that Miss uh, Mandela is self-employed, that she deals in a service, that she's a student, but she also has a, an occupation and an interesting one. You have about two minutes. We'll begin with Martin Gable. Miss Mandel, your, your uh, occupation has nothing to do with your being a student. Is that right? Nothing whatever. Is it something that you do uh, on weekends only? No. That's one down and nine to go, Miss Francis. But your hours are rather irregular, are they, in this position that you have? Yes. Uh, do you do something for, uh, for families in your work? Yes. Yes, you could say that. Do you, uh, are you in any way associated with children in your work? Sometimes. Uh, would you be considered, do you work indoors? Yes. Uh, would you be considered in any way a mother's helper or babysitter? No, I wouldn't. Two thousand eight to go, Mr. Sir. Miss Mandel, does your work require any physical activity on your part? Mm, yes. Is it in any way connected with food or drink? No. Nope. <laughs> Three down, seven to go, Miss Kilgallen. Uh, does it have any effect on improving the appearance of the house? No, it does not. Four down and six to go, Mr. Gable. Does it have any effect on improving the appearance of the people? Five down and five to go, Miss Francis. Is there anything sporting or game-like in what you do? No. Six down and four to go, Mr. Sir. Do you operate any kind of a vehicle or machine? No. Seven down and three to go, Miss Kilgallen. Well, when you do your work indoors, are you working somewhere other than your own home? Yes. Yes, Some and we just run out of time, Dorothy. I'm sorry. <laughs> You're not very close, actually, so I don't feel too badly about it. Miss Mandela's a trombone player. Good union member and all. I don't think you're very close. And more than that, and this is very understandable, this is beauty night on What's My Line. Miss Mandel has just been voted Miss Union New Jersey and now enters the New Jersey uh, contest, the Miss New Jersey contest, and may be Miss America before we know it. <laughs> and thanks very much for being Thank our guest. It was much. nice to have you with us, ma'am. Thank you. <laughs> We're a wee bit late, mm -hmm. so I will just say good night to right. Miss Dorothy Kilgallen. Good night, John. Did you say good night, John? Mm -hmm. Oh, yep. good night, John. Good night, Morton. Good night, Dorothy. Arlene. You Eventually. Know. Good night, Bennett. <laughs>
Want to hear about the summit later, John? Yes, sir. Yes, sir, Mr. Surf, sir. Yes, sir. And thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for being with us on What's My Life? What's My Line is a CBS television network production in association with Mark Goodson and Bill Todman. This is Hal Sam speaking.